Hello and welcome to the Imani Room for our Stream Religion class. This is for first grade through to sixth grade. I hope you've been enjoying the lessons so far. We have completed reading the book, The Story of Passover. And the main character there was Moses. If you want to do some further reading, I like to encourage you. I know some of you like to read deeper and deeper. Get into the Bible. Take the book of Exodus. That's the second book in the Bible. And you're going to have the real story. Okay? So that's very, very important. So we learned about Moses. Now we're going to take another book today, which is entitled Miriam at the River by Jane Yolen. Miriam at the River. So he speaks about brave Miriam who places her baby brother's basket into the river. And she sends the basket into the river, hoping her brother will be rescued. Now this must give you some clues, okay? Miriam is an older sister of Moses. So Moses is the guy who was put in the basket as a baby and guided by Miriam, placed on the river. And this river they're speaking about here is the river Nile. Nile. N-I-L-E. It's a river in Egypt. If you go to Egypt, you find that river there right now. Okay? A river Nile. So it's a very beautiful story. And so it's like I want to take you back into what we call the infancy narrative of Moses. Infancy. The word infancy comes from another word, infant. And I'm sure your parents will tell you who an infant is. An infant is a child. So when we talk about infancy narratives, we're talking about accounts or stories of the birth and simply the childhood of somebody. So what happened when somebody was born, when that person was an infant? Okay. In the Bible, you have a lot of infancy narratives. For example, you have the infancy narrative of Samuel. Samuel, who became a great prophet in Israel. The story is very beautiful. You find that in 1 Samuel, first book of Samuel. So his mother's name was Hannah, right? And Hannah had no children. Hannah couldn't bear children. Very sad story. And she went to the temple. She prayed, 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 prayed. In fact, the priest at the temple, Eli, thought that Hannah was drunk because she was crying and pouring out her heart. But Hannah told him, I I'm crying and praying because I don't have a child. And a lot of people make fun of me and all that. So, so, so. Eli told her, you know, next year by this time you would have a child. And true to, 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 to the story, Hannah had a child and she named the child Samuel and dedicated the, uh, the, 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 the child Samuel to God. Okay, so Samuel then moved when he was weaned to live with Eli in the temple. That's a beautiful story. We also have the infancy narrative of Jesus. Okay, so Jesus was born to Mary. His foster father was Joseph. You remember the story of how he was born. We learned about all this before Christmas. Okay, This was the Christmas story Okay, of how Jesus was born. So we have the infancy narrative of Samuel. We have the infancy narratives of Jesus. And guess what? Each one of you also has an infancy narrative. So I'd like you, as this lesson goes on, to think about this so you can speak to your parents your grandparents, your guardians, about your own infancy narrative, okay? Because you just did not happen, okay? You, you weren't born a, a, a nine-year-old, a ten-year-old, a five-year-old. You were a baby in your mother's womb. There was joy, expectation for your birth, and when you were born, things happened, okay? As I record this, today is the 25th of April, okay? And today is my feast day. Today is the feast of St. Mark the Evangelist. And my parents have told me that it was on this day that I was baptized. Baptized and given the name Mark. That's why I'm called Mark Nemo. Okay, That's a very special day for me. So this is an infancy narrative that was told to me about my own life. And it has a lot of significance for me. 
My mother also tells me a story when I was a little baby. She says uh, once my, my dad was out of town on business and, uh, and, and, and I was running temperature in the night and then I had a convulsion. A convulsion is like you start shaking, right? And, and she thought she was going to lose me. Hmm? So what she did was she put a spoon in my mouth. Okay, she put a spoon in my mouth so my teeth would not clamp together, right? And then, and then she took me to the hospital. She, she couldn't drive at that time. There was no car at home and all that. So, so she walked. She walked in the dark. She says it was about 10, 30, 11 p.m. in the night. She walked in the dark. She was so bold and so brave because she did not want to lose her son. And she took me to the hospital. They took care of me. They gave me shots and all that. And then I got better. Now I'm 56 years old, you see. So now I remember something of an account of, of my infancy uh, uh, days okay so so this is basically what's going to happen so so let's learn a bit about 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 uh what do you call it miriam at the river it's the story of uh, moses's infancy okay and and i hope we're going to learn so this is the first lesson of two lessons okay so this is the first lesson miriam at the river and we're going to read uh, from pages one through to sixteen so let, let's let's get at it and begin to uh, see what the story tells us. So, I creep to the riverside in the soft dark of night's end. In a woven basket lies my little brother, so young he does not even have a name. He sleeps, and in his dreams his legs and arms move as if he is swimming. I am afraid and not afraid. I'm only seven years old. We are slaves in Egypt and in Egypt, Pharaoh's words and Pharaoh's laws must be obeyed, even the wicked ones. But God's law is what I follow. And God's voice is the one I hear, even when others do not listen to what God has to say. We go to the Nile before the sun rises. For now, it is just a red line spilling along the horizon. I look up the water and down. Then to the hiding place I have chosen, surge, bulrush, papyrus, reeds, all I need to hide my brother from the Pharaoh's men and hide me from prying Egyptian eyes. I say a quick blessing over him, for he is so small, so much at risk. I give him a sister's kiss. Once again, I look around. Then I place the basket in the river, near the bending reeds. The basket is heavy, and I am small. I pretend I am simply a child, playing by the waterside. But under my robe, my heart beats so loudly, I am certain anyone near will hear. One quick push and the basket sails towards the middle of the reeds where the water is coolest. Mother has woven the basket so tightly. It does not sink but skips over little schools of fish, glossy as silver bangles. Then the sun comes out, and the bangles turn the color of Pharaoh's jewels. The basket skims past a yellow-billed stork, who stands 
with angel wings held high. Past an ibis, dipping its long beak into the water, so very like a scribe's pen in ink. So this is where we're going to stop here, and we will continue when we pick it up next week. But I want you to read this aloud yourself. Hear yourself pronounce the words of every letter. Because what we're doing is we're learning how to read as well as picking up the lessons from the infancy narrative of Moses. So now Miriam has placed the basket that contains a little brother onto the river. Uh, if you read the real account in Exodus, the basket was just not placed there on the river because Miriam's mother had smeared the basket with what's called bitumen or tar, okay? So that, because if you place a basket in water, you, you know, okay? It would sink because basket has holes in them, right? But if you have bitumen, okay, it means it protects it. It can float like a boat. Okay, the water cannot seep inside. So, so that's that's some detail that you can find when you read the real account. Okay, so I hope you will check uh, this YouTube channel certainly, and then you would look at the lesson plan and make sure you turn in your work. I like to hear your kind of comments as well about the classroom questions. So, when you're sending it, please do that. And I hope to see you next time. I hope you're staying safe, healthy, you're drinking a lot of water, you're washing your hands, you're, you're, you're being protected and you're protecting others. God bless you. I pray for you and I'll see you next time.